Yeah. So if you just pick this thing up for posterity, that's what we've got. Um, you see it's got, uh, like, what is the overall form? You know? It's, it's really kind of hard to say, like, is it a pyramid? Is it, like, a, the cylinder? Because you have the little cylinder thing on top. Or do you use, like, boxes? Or what? How do you even, like, how do you even begin? So, I don't know. The thing is, is you have you have options, right? So, for my part, I would probably use uh, uh, boxes and then cut things out of the boxes. Because boxes are always the easiest thing to draw. So your you know your sketchbook should be full of like boxes, you know, even boxes that like curve and twist. Because those forms will be useful in when you're doing organic things like people. Um, but for something like this, you know, you just do. I don't need to draw a little smaller because I'll run off the page. So, when you, when you start in with the box things, you always want to. So, like, just like this, the sculpture has a base, I'm building the base first, right? And then I can notice any kind of vertical alignments. Like I noticed that the, the bottom here is about the same as the middle, roughly. And so I can just draw a box within that original base. Bring it up very lightly. Sure that it connects down to the back too. Right? And then I noticed that that the next thing, the whole the whole top, um, I might not need a, a box that goes all the way to the top, but my next box could stack on top of that, be a little bit skinnier, right? And go up maybe about that far. So I've essentially made sort of a skyscraper, <laughs> right? Um, which is kind of what you're doing. You're, you're figuring out the, the three-dimensional geometry of it, the component structures, rather than what you actually actively see. So then I know that there's a, there's a sub-base here, and that, that it actually doesn't change the form. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And uh, the, the tricky parts start now, where I, where I know that there's this little box-ish looking form, but it's actually kind of curved, right? The next little layer under it. So I may need to start just sort of drawing these lines, widening them out, making them have a little curvature to them, right, as they go back. And then under it, there's an even more dramatically curved box-ish thing. And I want to make sure that it evolves proportionally within that box. And then under that, there's this crazy cutout, like, curved thing. But I know where the corners of the box are, right? Because I found those originally. When I was drawing my box form. See it? So there's the art of it, right? Is how do I express that curve correctly? And then it's got that little decoration on there. Now I have the question, do I want to get obsessed with the detail of the decoration? Or do I want to indicate where the decoration is? Most likely, you just want to indicate where the decoration is and draw on the way that it curves for that for the way that it indicate that, that you indicate right an approximation that won't mess you up later is is what you're looking for. I mean, on top of this, I could go and draw those loops if I want, right? Then 
going up from there, I can figure out a, roughly proportionally where the next little sub base is. And then I can go ahead and do the same sort of cutout thing. And then I know that there's this sort of um, more triangular approach to it here. Right? Almost pyramidal. And this has a pyramidal field too. And then for the top, now I just draw a sort of cut off pyramid. cap it off with this little oval leaf thing. Right. Then I go back and say, okay, detail there, detail there, triangular detail there, triangular detail there. And I'm done, right? Sort of, right? It's not bad, fairly accurate, huh? I mean, it's not exactly, but it doesn't have to be because once I remove the object from the world, all that is left is the drawing. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to put the drawing and the object next to each other in a frame and say, look at how wonderfully I've rendered this. You know, I'm just going to put my drawing on the wall and that's it. So now I've done two passes through. One pass to get the overall structures, a second to break it down a little bit more. And every time that I go over this again, I add another set of details, right? So if I want to go over this again, where do I go from here? Do I just start outlining? Not really, I want to like, yes, I'm going to wind up finding the outlines, but I'm gonna decide exactly where certain elements of this like intersect, you know, and how they intersect, right? Continue observing the form and how it, how it is um, constructed. So, I'm going to increase the specificity of my observations. That's my goal, right? This doesn't quite, the second one doesn't quite have this like upper like articulated curve. It kind of goes more direct for the triangle, the, um, the curve, the bottom curve. Um, so I want to incorporate that, right? Maybe I can move the decoration around a little bit. And then here I missed out on, on this little line where this pyramid form begins, right? So I just work my way back through the form again. Adding detail to the way it, to the way that it was made. Noticing how this, all these things line up as it goes down the zigzag of the form, right? So, um, from here, getting ahead of ourselves and introducing you to next week's content, um, what I can do is uh, begin to incorporate a little value. So from here, I want to go right into figuring out how this is going to work in terms of light and shadow. And I, I, I conveniently on a box form, the edge of the light and the shadow is like right on the corner of things, right? So one of the rules of thumb is that if you see a shift in plane, right? So this plane is different from this plane, there's gonna be a shift in value. And if you see a shift in value, there is gonna be a shift in, in the plane. So that is a way that you can double check yourself back and forth uh, um, so you don't get tripped up by what you see. So what I do is now I just go through and I very um, carefully, but not too carefully, 
fill in the dark side with a little bit of value. Not incredibly dark, but not light either. So this is called the poster effect. You notice it on the Obama Hope thing. And then here what I can do is I can ground the object by A, filling in this line that has the total absence of light with the little shadow under it, and B, adding a little ground shadow. Changing the mark direction to adhere to more the the pedestal than the object itself. Make sense? That's kind of sweet, huh? So all, all I've done is combine my structural observation with one value, and then I took my shading and just went parallel to all the lines that are here. And those parallel lines reinforced the structure that I developed. And then I got slightly ahead and found my darkest value right there. So it's pretty, it's, it's simple, right? But you have to be able to, you have to be able to say like, what is the simplest structure that I can break this down into? And then how do I add those complications to it?